so once the model is built, our aim is to see whether the model is uh, working good or not, how the performance of the model is. So what metrics can be used for the performance evaluation? So one of the metrics used is the confusion matrix, which we will have in the loop. So um, so focus on the predictive capability of a model. What is easier rather than how fast it takes to classify or build a model or scalable, but we are also interested to uh, find out what cost we are going to bear for the uh, classification. So, and we also, we are also interested in how accurately the model has been built. So we have something called as actual class and we have something called as a predict class since we are looking at the supervised uh, learning. So supervised learning is something which in the class tables are already known. So from the given data, so we divide our model into 60, 40 or 70, 30 or 80, 20 percentage. So 80 percent will be used for training the model and 20 percent of the instances will be used for checking the performance of the model. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so so for the remaining 20 percent, the classes are already known and we are interested to we have already built a model and we are interested to know how is the performance of the model. So actual class is something which the lab, labels which are already there and predicted class is something which is given by the model. The model has predicted the class. So this they have been made for binary classification. There are two classes, yes and no. So the predicted class can obviously the model will predict yes or no. Actual classes will be obviously yes and no. So if the model, if the class label is yes, and uh, uh, predicted by the model is also yes. So in this matrix they are represented by let's say A. So there are A set of instances whose class is yes, and the model also predicted yes. So those instances will come under the tag true positive. The actual class is true and the model have also predicted as true. So they are true positive. But there will be some of the instances which whose class is yes, but the model have predicted the class as no. Okay, the actual class is yes, but the model has predicted is no. So there are supposedly B set of instances and they will become under the tag false negative. Means what? They have they are actually yes, but they have been falsely classified as negative or no by the uh, model. Okay. And there will be a few instances whose uh, class is no, but they have been classified as yes. So say, say the C set of instances. So this C represents some number, okay. So, so 10, 20, 15, whatever the model predicted. For the instances whose class is no and the predicted is yes. So they have been the class is actually no, but the model predicted is yes. So falsely it have detected it as positive. That's why a false negative for C. Okay, and there will be few instances whose class is no and the model also predicted no. Maybe the D set of instances. And they are the class is negative and model also predicted no, that's true negative. So uh, this matrix is called as a confusion matrix, and uh, this is used for evaluation of a model. So our aim is what the accuracy should be more. The accuracy will be more when we have the class is yes and predicted also yes, and class is no and predicted also no. So these guiding metrics this should be higher, and then we will get the uh, Good classifier. Okay. Mm. So uh, the accuracy, which is nothing but a true positive plus true negative divided by the total number of uh, instances, is called as the accuracy. But uh, now, why? Uh, but we have seen that accuracy is not only the measure which can be used for finding the good model. Now what they say is this, consider that you have a two class problem and the number of class zero examples are total, suppose thousand instances are there. And uh, sorry, uh, yes, total uh, 10,000 instances are there. And suppose out of them, the only 10 samples are there for a class one and the remaining 9,990 samples are for class zero. 
See, if this is a scenario, then what will happen is the model will get to know more about the class zero only. It will get very less information. It will not be able to build the uh, knowledge for a class one, okay? Because there are very less number of instances. So if this is a scenario, and if now we are checking the performance, okay? Okay, so now we are checking the performance. So if model predicts everything to be class zero, okay, if it's going to predict everything as a class zero, and we know that there are only 10 instances for class one. So for these instances also, it is predicting as class zero only. So out of the 10,000 instances, only 10 instances will be wrongly classified, okay? That is what model is giving you 99.9% .9 accuracy. Now, this is what this is the data set is such bad. And for this, you got this accuracy. Then is it good? No, because if a future example of class one comes, it will not be able to classify it. That's why they are saying that accuracy is not only the measure that should be considered. Okay. And that's a drawback of the accuracy and um, so they say that as the accuracy increases then the cost for classification also increases so now how you can uh, relate is like uh, now so the same thing they have represented and they say that what is the um, CI given J, that is about the cost of please classifying the J examples as class I. Okay, what is the class? Actually, the class is J, but you have classified it as I. Wrongly. Now, how do you find the cost for that? Is now consider that this is a confusion matrix. This is the cost matrix actually, and this is a confusion matrix. Then you have two models built. Okay, you have a model one and you have a model two. Uh, which is built uh, uh, on the data set and uh, this is the cost matrix associated for classification. Now what is the cost matrix? It tells you that if you have the actual classes plus and the predicted is also plus, then the weight uh, associated with that uh, classification is minus one. This you all can mute yourself, okay? If you have a class no, 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 no. actually, your actual class is class. class is class. Yes, all of you mute yourself. I can hear the echo. So, if the actual class is plus and the, if predicted is negative, then it means it is what? Actual class is plus and it has been predicted negative means it belongs to what? True positive, true negative, false positive, false negative. Which class it will belong? False negative. Yes, it will belong to false negative. So if, if something goes uh, into the false negative category, then the cost uh, or the um, what you say, the, the, uh, it should be charged more uh, because it, it like if you instead of replaying, uh, taking the plus and negative class, if we take it into cancer patient and a non-cancer patient, so it will be something like a patient is having a cancer and it is detected that it is predicted that he is not having a cancer. So that is very um, it will pay a very heavy cost. Right? It will be uh, it will. Uh, it's like it's a question of his life and that he should get a proper treatment so that the penalty is high so that's why the hundred is the cost and if it's negative and plus then it also it should be uh, give penalty but the uh, penalty given will be less as compared to the first negative so that will be one and this uh, if it's a negative and it's negative, then obviously because plus now indicates something we are interested or a cancer patient, something we are interested. Interested. So if a person is not having a cancer and he's detected as not cancer, then then no cost uh, should be uh, <coughs> like that. So, uh, but fine. Uh, so, uh, so if this is a model and this is another model. 
then uh, uh, if uh, if you find out the accuracy of this modulus, if you take this plus this divided by this whole instances, you get modulus given 80% of accuracy. And for this modulus, you take this plus this and divide by the total, it, it gives you the 90% of accuracy. So you can see that at the cost increases, uh, sorry, the, as the accuracy increases, the charge cost also increases. So just to give you an uh, idea of the cost and accuracy work hand in hand, so um, a short example. Okay, so the uh, cost matrix uh, is maybe already given to you, and uh, maybe you will uh, have, it will be asked to find out the cost for classification. Okay, so there are many measures actually, but uh, so only the few I have covered. What we have looked into the accuracy and cost of the matrix. So this is where we will stop the classification. One of the method is still remaining that we will cover next time. And so next now we will start with something another chapter. We will start with the frequent item set, the uh, some part of the fourth unit which is remaining. And so that is something called as association rule mining. We will be having a look at few other things in this. So here uh, uh, we have already seen this example in the starting lecture. So we are interested to, this is also called as a market basket analysis problem. So we are just interested to find that if a person is buying something, what else are the things that he can buy? And these are the things which are required for increasing the business. So given a set of transactions, find rules that will predict the occurrence of an item based on the occurrence of other items in a transaction. So these are the set of transactions that are performed at a particular mall. So if a, we have already uh, seen that a first person have purchased this and the second person have purchased bread, diaper, beer, eggs and so on. So we are just uh, interested to predict if a person is um, uh, uh, buying so and so items, what are the chances that he can buy the other things so that we can find out whether the items are associated with each other or not. So if the items are associated with each other, we can keep them um, next to each other so that it might click to a person that he may need it and he will buy it to increase the business. So, so what type of association are there? If a person is going to, it is mentioned given by the rule. Uh, so which says that if a person is going to buy a diaper, he is going to buy a beer. So they will keep these items next to each other. If a person is going to buy milk and bread, then he can also buy the egg and oak and so on. So our, our aim is to find such association and uh, we have to take only the rules which are having some uh, about some given threshold. What is that? We will have a look at it. Say they uh, take uh, then a few of the terms which we should be aware of while working with the uh, association mining. <coughs> the item set. And what are item set is? It's a collection of one or more items. Okay, for example, milk, bread, and diaper is an item set whose size is three. Okay, because this item set contains three items, it is called as a three item set. So the key item set can be one item set, two item set, three item set, and n item set, and so on. Depends upon how many different items you are having uh, in a shop, you can have that can be the size, maximum size of the item set, distinct items. Okay. So, key item set is an item set that contains key item. Now, what is the support count? The frequency of occurrence of an item. For example, 
how many times that particular item set is occurring in the given uh, database okay or the data set so like for example milk bread and diaper all together okay so if you are counting the support count then you have to count how many transactions are having this item set milk bread and diaper they should occur in a single transaction okay so you have your milk and bread but you do, you do not have a diaper so this will not be counted here you have a bread and a diaper but you do not have a milk so if a particular item is occurring all all the items should occur okay, from that given item set now this is what you have a milk diaper but you do not have a bread okay. so again this will not be counted so uh, you have a bread here you have a milk and you have a diaper so this will be counted because this transaction contains all the three item that is not only item but the total item set okay so that is one and here also you have bread milk and diaper okay so um, so there are total two transactions from the uh, who are having who are having the occurrence of the item set okay so that is 2 by 5 what is the support that is the two by the 2 by 5 total transactions are five and out of the five only two are having this item set milk bread and diaper so the support for that item set becomes 2 by Five. But we are not interested. If you are not interested to attend the lecture, you can leave the lecture. No need to join for attendance. And the people who are sitting only for attendance can just mute yourself. Okay, I can hear some traffic noise. I can hear some someone is singing the song. It's irritating me. Okay. I don't want to find out who it is. Whoever it is, other students can pass on the message in the group and ask that person to mute yourself, himself, him or her, whoever it is. support is something the fraction of transaction that contains an item set so for the given item set bill bread and diaper it is 2 by 5 okay we are not interested uh, if a person is buying only a uh, single item in a total uh, given data set if a item is purchased only one time okay so we cannot find its association with the other uh, items because it is not frequently occurring See, uh, if the person is buying that per one particular item uh, by chance, then we cannot find out that uh, how it is associated with the other items in the market. So we are interested in only items which are uh, uh, occurring above some threshold. So we are also we need to understand what is frequent item set. We know what is item set, but we are interested in only frequent item set. And what is a frequent item set? An item set whose support is greater than or equal to minimum support threshold. Minimum support threshold will be given to you, and you have to find out the um, uh, support for all. Uh, Uh, item set and you have to select only those who are having the support above the given threshold so what is that we will see with an example suppose um, 
So I already told you that this is a given data set and I'm, I'm interested to find the association rule which tells if a person is buying milk and diaper, he is going to buy the beer. If I come up with this uh, set of rules, I have to find out how good this rule is. So you can find out that using the support and the confidence and support is nothing but you have already seen that fraction of transaction that contain both X and Y. So support we have already seen in the earlier slide, but we are also interested in confidence. So confidence is nothing but measures how often. Now this is X and this is Y. Okay, they are trying to find out so confidence measures how often items in Y how often the items in Y are appearing in a transaction that also contains X. It should be more, right? If a person is going to buy this, he, is, he, he should, he is going to buy this also. So if it, this is done more number of times, then only I can come up with this type of association. Correct. If only uh, total, uh, um, if this confidence is low, I am not interested. So we will see with an example, say, Okay, uh, so for the milk and diaper and uh, milk diaper X and Y is your beer, I have I'm interested to find support and confidence. Now using the formula, now are you able to get this? So we know what is support is nothing but uh, uh, this data set have total five transaction that's why you have a five over here that how many uh, transactions are containing the milk diaper and beer two this whole rule okay milk diaper and beer i have not taken only the left hand side or only the right hand side but i have taken this both milk diaper and beer so it's two by five so the support is what two by five because two transactions contain this item set but what is the confidence in how many items is this milk and diaper coming? The milk and diaper is coming three times. And in those three times, beer is also coming. That's why two by three. The confidence is nothing but two by three. Three transactions contain meal, milk and diaper. You can see this milk and diaper. You can see milk and diaper. You can see milk and diaper. But from these three, four, five, only the Transaction 3 and 4 contains the beer. So this fifth transaction does not contain the beer. So the frequency of occurrence of milk and diaper is 3, but out of those 3, only 2 are having the beer. So that gives you the confidence for the root milk, diaper, and beer. Milk, diaper, beer. So that is 2 by 3. So how good the rules are, you can find out using the confidence. This confidence should be high. If it's less, we are not interested in that rule because that person might have purchased this beer by chance. So I cannot say that if a person is going to buy milk and diaper, he is also going to buy a beer. I cannot say that if he is doing that by chance. If he is doing that by chance, that frequency will be low and the confidence will go down. Okay. So, what our aim is, we, have, we are uh, doing association rule mining task. So given a set of transaction T, okay, the goal of association rule mining is to find all rules which are having support should be greater than the minimum support threshold that will be given to you and confidence should be greater than the minimum confidence threshold that is given to you. Oh, we just it, huh? Okay. Okay, uh, so we are interested to find out this support and confidence that if they are below above the given threshold, we are interested in them. How can we do that? Then what a given data set will contain uh, very very much items. Okay, from those items and transaction, I have to find all the uh, rules. And then first I will find out the frequent items and from the frequent item, I will find out the rules. So how this can be done? This can be done using the brute force approach. That is, list all possible association rules. 
So I have I know the uh, different uh, distinct items present in the data set. So I I can use all possible combinations. All I can color. try to find out the association rule. Then for each association rule, I can find out the support and confidence. And if they are above a particular threshold, then I will then only I will choose them. Otherwise, I will leave them. Okay, but this is very computationally expensive. So, um, so, so uh, we will have a look at the part of how to find out the support and confidence greater than the uh, given uh, support. Before going to that, we will have, have a look at this association because we have to decide the threshold for the support and confidence. So now they have given that these are the rules that can be generated. They have generated only for the item set between diaper and beer. All possible combinations. What is the item set? Yeah. Item set is milk, diaper, and beer. And for that item set, so many rules can be generated. But I am not interested in all the rules. I am interested in only the rules which are crossing the given, some given threshold. You can see that they are divided. All the binary partitions are made for the given item set. And the left hand side can contain one item, two item and uh, or the right, uh, right, uh, right hand side can also contain the one item or two items set. so all possible combination can uh, can be generated and you can see that you cannot have a null if a person is not buying anything what are the chance he can buy something or if a person is buying something you can buy nothing so the null is eliminated so now they have found out that now you have to find out for each uh, rule you have to find out the support and confidence you have already the definition in the earlier slide. So you can see that the rules are generated from these uh, one of the frequent item, uh, items that are given to you. And you can see the support is support for all them is same. You have different rules. Okay, I will repeat. You have different rules generated from the same item set. You can see that the support for all the rules is same and the confidence for all the rules is Fire. Because what is support? Suppose it's a little fraction of transaction which is having that item set. So no, no matter your x and y is changing, the, your x union y remains the same. The item set remains the same. That's why the support for all the item uh, that item set will remain same, but the confidence will change. So this is a demonstration to show you that you can see all the above rules are binary partition of the same item set okay? same item set milk diaper and beer and the rules generate originally from the same item set have identical support but can have different confidence okay and so you can see that the support is same and confidence is different. So just they have demonstrated this to show that you can have a different threshold for support and a different threshold for confidence. Okay, are you getting this support and confidence? If you are comfortable, we will move ahead. Yes, anyone have any doubt? <coughs> okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So if we have to find the frequent uh, rules, uh, we have to find the rules, we, we have to do the frequent item set generation. So, uh, once you get the frequent item, using that frequent item, you have to generate the rules. So when we generate the frequent item set, we are interested in only the item set whose support is greater than the minimum uh, support that this threshold will be given to you. And uh, we are interested in the rule which is having the high confidence. So the brute force approach is uh, so, 
The thing is like you have when you have the brute force approach, a lot of combination will be there. For each rule, you will have to find the support and confidence, and the above threshold will be selected. But it is very uh, uh, expensive for compute uh, computational expensive because they have given only your very only small five uh, five transactions are given, but the real life data will not have only five transactions. Okay, it will have um, so many transactions and the items it will also. Uh, will be very high. So finding the support and confidence for all those available uh, combinations is difficult. So that's why the other is what you can do. You can generate the all possible frequent item. You can generate the item sets. Once you generate the item set, you don't have to use all the item set for rule making, but you have to use only those which are frequent item. So here few of the item set will be dropped okay, from generating the rules means you are trying to reduce the uh, computation. Okay, and from those now once you uh, uh, satisfy the threshold criteria, only those items will be used for rule generation. So you are trying to reduce the computation, but what they are saying to real life application, this is also very expensive computation. Okay, so they have tried to demonstrate it using the, the slatic. You can see that now you have only five items are uh, displayed. Supposedly, the database have only five distinct items. Now, a person can buy a, a one item, or he can also buy a two item, or he can buy a three item, or he can buy a four item, or he can buy all five items and in any combination. Only for these five distinct items. There are so many combinations. Okay. So this will be total 31 because none we are not interested in. It will be two five combinations. So just to show that it is so uh, complex. So in brute force approach, what will happen? You have to use each and every one for generating the rule. But in the now this uh, pruning approach, what they are trying to do, they are trying to calculate the support for each uh, the item set, and those who are satisfying the threshold criteria only will be selected. So they are trying to drop few of the links from this. So, for example, now in brute force approach, they are trying to demonstrate. What they are saying is each item set in the latex is a candidate frequent item set. Now, these are all possible combinations. Now, I have to find out the frequent one. So, each of them can be frequent, right? Before starting, I don't know who is going to be frequent. Now, how I am going to count that support and all. <coughs> so, what the group was approach says, each item set in the latex is a candidate frequent item set. So now I have to find the support for that. Which finding the support, I have to scan through the whole database and find out how many times a particular item is coming in the given data set. Correct. So there are considering there are n transactions and the distinct item set is supposedly not distinct item set, it can be the maximum width of the transaction that is W. This is n, n number of transaction, w is the maximum width of the transaction, and I have a list of candidates, which is n. And what is this n? We already know that it is 2 raised to d. d is what? The distinct number of item set. Okay, so this n, because these all will sit in this basket, right? What I have to do for each item, I have to go through this, I have to make a count. Okay, are you getting this? <coughs> so that becomes n into m into w and what is m is nothing but a 2 raised to d. So that's so expensive. <coughs> are you getting? So since it is very uh, 
expensive our aim is to reduce the work how will we see now this is that they have added just to demonstrate that as the d increases that is a you know items it increases the number of rules that can be generated can also uh, are also increasing okay so if d is just six different six zero two rules can be generated from this so only for six item if so many rules can be generated now you can just imagine in real life application that will be so high okay so our aim is to reduce uh, reduce this work and how that we will see using one of the algorithm that is uh, maybe the uh, the uh, a priori algorithm which we will see so um, so ultimately uh, work can be reduced by either reducing the number of candidates or reducing the number of transactions or by reducing the number of comparison n into n so we are going to look at the number of candidates how we can reduce how we can reduce the number of comparisons also we will look reducing the number of transactions something not what we are going to look at the part of a syllabus so you can see uh, from this slides our aim is to reduce this this com this comparison because for each of these candidate you have to go and scan this whole data set and get the count so how this m into n comparisons can be reduced and uh, so reduce the number of candidates which is 2 raised to d so we are going to use some pruning techniques uh, so only frequent items will be taken into consideration and the number of transactions can also be reduced. Uh, you have for that direct hashing and pruning technique is there, uh, which we will not see as a part of syllabus. And if you are interested, you can search on direct hashing and pruning and <clears throat> uh, how the compare number of comparisons can also be reduced using a uh, same number of hashing technique is used over here and we will see it in the coming lectures. So we are just storing the uh, uh, item sets in, into a uh, tree structure so that uh, we can, uh, we do not have to scan the whole, uh, whole item set, but we will scan only the tree uh, branches where we have a chance that we will get an item set. So, how that comparison can be re reduced, we will see in the coming lectures. So, that is the priori algorithm which we will be starting, maybe tomorrow we will start it.